spotting the Seaberg discotheque details. This is a 1965 Seaberg discotheque jukebox. The title strips are relocated into the front glass, allowing the uh, mechanism to be visible. In this position, there used to be the income totalizer and uh, service switch. And this was completely blocked off. So what I've done is this is mounted inside of here. I can still actually use the original clips. And remove the title board. Nothing's to be customized in that anyway. The frame is screwed with a screw there into the original frame, a screw there, a screw there, and a screw there. On the very bottom, I do have a two inch wide plastic strip that covers this gap. As you can see it's slightly angled. In fact you can actually see the screw there and the screw there showing. Well, I did this in 1996 and you know it wasn't perfect. Then up in here this thing doesn't like to focus, but there's a screw there and a screw there that are simply projecting through. And that's corresponds to these two holes. So I can simply clip. board back in. Although with one hand it's a little difficult. Too hard to do it at the moment. Now because of the G.I. Joe I can't open the top. But as you can see I've got a two inch maple plank which is at the very corners. There was the one factory hole and I drilled a second hole. Then screwed into the plank is this blue metal piece. Now the Seberg LP console is actually from an LPC1 machine. I tried to make this into more of an LPC1 style machine. These are printed on magnetic paper that you can get where you find like t-shirt transfers and, and stuff, but they're magnets and so they're changeable and I printed out scans of the original covers they had like a gaudy plastic like artwork in there that was all yellowed so I tore that out too the keyboards meant no cigarette burns So now when I have to go in here, I prop this up with this antique cane. It originally had a strap that would a snap and they're very dangerous. So I would never recommend using that. This light fixture is added. And then I have two wing nuts that Take and uh, allow me to simply remove this to change records. I used to put all six of them on, but I don't anymore. Let me put on two. This panel, I think, was originally metal, but it was missing when I got the machine.
And there's our machine and records. Now if you do want to put something on there for decoration, even though it makes it a real nuisance, what I did is, there's his foot and there's an angle bracket there. The angle bracket's slotted, so you just loosen the screw in his foot and slide it off. On the other side, there's another angle bracket under the foot. And then I don't know if I'm going to be able to get a picture of it. But there's the metal bracket screwed to his butt. And it's slotted and it's screwed into the original screw. You have to fish up in there with a screwdriver, loosen that screw, loosen the other two screws, and remove G.I. Joe before the top can be opened. I relocated the service switch down here because this is where I service it. There's the opening sealed off from the income totalizer. Now 90% of the time those are in there but they're bypassed because they burned out. And I don't remember but somewhere in here where the wires are there's a diode or resistor which takes up the income totalizers. Yeah, it's right there. And I think these are for the coins. There's 25, 50, and 10 cents coming in and then they're all joined together on one wire because the wall boxes don't need to count how much money they're bringing in anymore. All the coin gear is functional although I also have a cheater switch connected to the scavenger cable. Now this is the crowning achievement, this is the uh, circuit relays that allow me to operate it from other rooms. I'm just going to eject this. And what it does is the outlet labeled jukebox runs the amplifier and mechanism. The outlet labeled lights runs the fluorescent lights in the unit and internally runs the relay that turns on and off the speakers in the cabinet. So when the unit's turned on from another room, the speakers are turned off and the lights are turned off. Of course the wall box wiring is coming in here and it's controlled by the stepper which operates like a rotary telephone and dials numbers to operate it. We also have the service manuals from Victory Glass as well as the service manual for the wall boxes. The rest of it electronically is pretty much stock. Now this box is very complicated to build and I've lost the diagrams and don't remember exactly how to do it and I'm not that sharp anymore but it intercepts the speakers to turn them on and off so if it's turned off from another room the speakers in the console don't work and these front terminals are power if it's turned on at the main it turns on the speakers and lights if it's turned on only from the remote it only turns on the amplifier and mechanism. Solid state control center. But really the actual mod is pretty simple and reversible. And there was also another like steel bar that went across here that I just unbolted and removed. Since I'm not in a high security situation, but I believe it went tied in on each side there's a pocket. 
and I still have that and the marquee in case I wanted to reverse it. But there you have it, a customized discotheque.